In general, it is easy to overlook the estimation of the sample size during the design of the experiment. This is because many people do not understand the statistical contents of the statistical power and the experiment. Therefore, I will explain the concept of statistical power in this presentation, and I will show the process of obtaining a reasonable sample size by actually referring to the article published in the Korean Journal of Veterinary Medicine. In hypothesis tests, researchers assume null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. There is a simple explanation on top of this slide. And they reject null hypothesis when they are valid or invalid. Type, one er type 2 errors appears at this time. The probability of rejecting a null hypothesis when it is wrong is called sensitivity. It is power. It is statistical power. A type 1 error occurs when the null hypothesis is true but rejected. And a type 2 error occurs when the null hypothesis is false but not rejected. So statistically, power is important to prevent type 2 error. Generally, if you have a power of 0.8 or more, you can think of it as reliable statistical result. Now you can see several experimental design steps. There is an important step in this picture, estimating sample size. It says that a priori assumption from previous work is needed to estimate sample size. You can call this process post hoc power analysis. This step is necessary because if you jump over this step and get unsatisfying statistical power, you cannot turn it back. So you have to estimate sample size before start experiment. This is a mind map about statistical power. There are three factors which influence statistical power. Sample size, effect size, significant level. And with these factors, we can calculate statistical power through the program named G-Power. And I surveyed these three things with more details. In the last semester, I surveyed the statistical techniques and experimental animals used in the veterinary surveys for the past four years from the Korean Journal of Veterinary Medicine. Among them, the ANOVA and students' t-tests were the most common statistical method. So in our power analysis experiment, I used ANOVA test. And, and I said there are three factors influencing the power. Sample size, significant level, its other name is alpha, and the effect size. The first factor, sample size, is the total number of samples used in the experiment. If the sample size is large, the accuracy and statistical power of the experiment will increase but the cost for the experiment will also increase. So it is important to obtain appropriate sample size by using minimal cost. The second factor, significant level, is the error probability of the sample static obtained from the sample when the hypothesis test is performed. The statistical power increases as the p-value becomes smaller. If the p-value is greater than 0.05, the power drops unreliably. The last factor, effect size means the extent of size in the population or degree to which the null hypothesis is wrong. And it can be obtained by dividing the subtraction of the experimental group in the control group by the variance value of the experimental group. G-Power is a tool to compute statistical power analysis for many different tests. 
in the power analysis, you can use this program to calculate power and the sample size. As you can see in this slide, the post hoc power analysis can find out our appropriate statistical power. After that course, the priori power analysis can give you the minimum sample size satisfying the power. Here's an example of G power experiment. As mentioned earlier, three factors can be obtained in the article, and you can calculate the proper statistical power from the post hoc analysis. And then, in priori power analysis, you can set the significant level to 0.05 and set the power to 0.8 and put the effect size obtained from the post hoc analysis. You can get the appropriate sample size. I did the post hoc power analysis through the G Power program. I took the previous value as an example and obtained the power of about 0.84. It means the previous study had more than 80% power. This means you can use previous studies effect size in priori power analysis. Now you can give the 0.8 power and 0.05 significant level the alpha with the previous effect size. You can get the minimum sample size, the total sample size. In this semester, I have surveyed about the method of estimating sample size and the important factors of statistical power. Now, we know the necessity of these concepts, but actually many people overlook the importance of those steps. I hope that this video can help many people to know about the importance of this process and to consider it well before start their experiments. Thanks for watching. It's Jisof Kim from the Jeju National University.